Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and today I'm doing a mod tutorial for BuildCraft. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole series on BuildCraft tutorials, so definitely stay tuned to my channel to find out uh, all the things you'll need to know about BuildCraft. The current live version of BuildCraft is 2.2.5. There's uh, currently an alpha release of 3.0, which I've already done some videos on. You should check them out if you're interested in the alpha and upcoming um, items that BuildCraft has added. Today's mod tutorial will be for BuildCraft pipes. I'm going to be teaching you guys all the different pipes that come with BuildCraft. Um, you should know that there are some add-on packs for BuildCraft that add other pipes, but today's tutorial will only be covering the uh, vanilla pipes that come with BuildCraft all by itself. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so let's open up our crafting table here and show the many different types of pipes that BuildCraft has to offer. First off, you should know that there are three separate items that can be transported through pipes. First off, you have just standard items. That represents any item in the game. Dirt, flower, stone wafer, you have Red Power 2 installed, glowstone, any item in the game can be transmitted through an item pipe. The second thing is liquid pipes. This represents water, oil, and fuel. Oil and fuel being items added by BuildCraft itself. Uh, lava, that kind of stuff. So anything that's a liquid. Um, keep in mind that a bucket filled with water is considered an item, but um, just, you know, water itself is considered a liquid. And finally, there's power, which is only specific to BuildCraft, and I'll get to in a little bit, and in, as well as in future episodes. So the first part we're going to cover are item distribution pipes. These are, I these are pipes that carry items along. The first one that you need is a wooden, two wooden planks and a piece of glass. That'll give you your wooden transport pipe. And almost all items, or pretty much all of the pipes in the vanilla build craft, are built by using a piece of glass in the middle and the two um, items representing the type of pipe on the sides. So in this case, this is a wooden pipe, so it's wood, glass, wood. Next, we've got cobblestone pipes, which is cobblestone, glass, cobblestone. Gives you a cobblestone transport pipe. There's also a smooth stone transport pipe. So this is stone, as opposed to cobblestone. These are two different items. There's the iron transport pipe, the gold transport pipe, and finally the diamond transport pipe. And the very last one is the obsidian transport pipe. So these represent all your vanilla pipes. Uh, these are pretty much everything that exists in BuildCraft at the moment. And those are your item transport pipes. So let's get started on showing each one in turn and how they work. So first off, pipes transfer items from one inventory to another. The simplest example of an item that has an inventory is a chest. Chests have inventories. And in order to pump items through a pipe, the first thing you're going to need is a wooden transport pipe. And that goes on the side of the block that you want to pump items into or out of. You'll also notice that this pipe happens to have a slightly colored inside. And I'll go into detail on what that is in a moment, but rest assured that you'll understand what that means. So what do wooden pipes do? Wooden pipes take items out of inventories. So you've got a chest here, and a wooden pipe is used to take items out of the chest and pump them into a piping system. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need an engine, but I'll go into that in just a moment. Next up is the cobblestone pipe. The cobblestone pipe can connect to wooden pipes, and any other pipes, so it can connect to itself. And what will happen is a cobblestone pipe basically sends items through the pipe. Um, it doesn't have any special properties, just if an item enters in one side, it will continue along and move through to the next side. So let's say we wanted to set up a system that pumped items out of this chest and into that chest. We'd simply say we need a wooden pipe to get items out of here, and they would continue to move along. Let's demonstrate that now. So I've placed a redstone engine underneath this pipe, and I'll explain exactly what they are in a moment but just rest assured that you need a redstone engine working on a pipe to get it to extract items. And I'm going to place one piece of cobblestone in this chest. And the redstone engine is going to activate the wooden pipe and cause it to pull that cobblestone item out of the chest. And the cobblestone item will continue just along through the cobblestone pipes, and finally it'll land in this chest over here. So if we watch the inventory, Ta-da! It showed up. So there's our cobblestone. Note that the cobblestone is not coming out of this chest because there's no wooden pipe and there's no redstone engine working on it. Next up is the smooth stone pipe. So that was cobblestone. This is smooth stone. Um, 
Smooth stone works pretty much exactly the same way as cobblestone, but it does have a special property, and I'll get into that in a moment once I touch on golden transport pipes. Um, but the nice thing about smooth stone is, if you place a piece of cobblestone next to another cobblestone pipe, you can see that they connect to each other, and that just becomes a mess. And if you want a tight piping system, you're going to want to use a smooth stone pipe next to your cobblestone pipe. Smooth stone and cobblestone pipes both have the same properties, but they do not connect to each other. So you can have a bunch of piping systems all running next to each other that don't interfere if you alternate between cobblestone and smooth stone. So that's basically the gist with smooth stone. It works the same as cobblestone. Next up is the iron pipe. Um, let's say, for example, that we had a piping system that went something like this. Which way would the item go? Well, in reality, the item is going to go in a random direction each time. Sometimes it would go into this chest, and other times it would go into this chest. Iron pipes are used to determine exactly which way they go. If I knock off this cobblestone pipe here and place down an iron chest, you'll see that there is now an item with a clear side and an item with a thicker side, a dark colored inside. The item, the side that's clear, like this one right here, is where the items will always go, regardless of what chest they come out. So if it were to come out this chest, it would go down this pipe. If it came out this chest, it would go down this pipe. And even if it came out of this chest here, it would go into the iron pipe and bounce right back in and go back into the chest it came from. So no matter what, any items traveling through this pipe system will land over here. In order to change which direction is currently the primary, you're going to need to make yourself a wrench. And a wrench is going to be used for quite a few recipes in Buildcraft, so it's a good thing to know how to make one. You need to make a stone gear, as you just saw me make, and then place some iron like so, and you've got a wrench. Now if I come over here and right click on the iron pipe with the wrench, it changes which side the output is. So now every item would go into this chest. Let's demonstrate that now by placing a piece of cobblestone in the chest again. And you can see it was quickly pumped out by our redstone engine. And currently the side that's clear is on this chest. So the item will go through the iron pipe and head directly into the chest. Perfect. And if I place another piece of cobblestone in there and change this chest to go that way, for example, the cobblestone will now head in that direction as it enters the iron pipe. Excellent. The only other feature of iron pipes that you should know about is that they respond to redstone signals. So if we run a redstone wire and we get ourselves a lever, we can see that when activating the redstone signal, it changes the direction of the iron pipe. And by deactivating the redstone signal, it changes it again. So that's something you're going to want to know about. It makes for some pretty neat designs. And that's how you use iron pipes. Next up are gold pipes. Gold pipes work just like cobblestone pipes. However, they make items going through them move faster. However, the only way to do that is by activating iron pipes with a redstone signal. And you'll see that they change to a darker color gold when receiving a redstone signal. When the redstone is off, they do not have that extra color. Um, when the gold pipe is off, it functions exactly the same as a cobblestone or stone pipe in that it connects to any other pipes and doesn't have any special properties. Let's check out how this works now. If we place a piece of cobblestone in our chest, it will be pumped out at the normal speed through our wooden pipe. And as soon as it hits the gold pipe, it's going to zip much faster through the system and land in the chest. And that's how you use gold pipes. One more detail about golden pipes is that when items are going through them, they do eventually slow down. If they're going through a cobblestone pipe system, they slow down faster than they would if they were going through a smooth stone system. Next up is the diamond pipe. Let's recreate the system that we had from a moment ago. We've now got the chest situation where we have one output here or one output here. The diamond pipe allows us to determine which items go to which chests. How do we do this? We simply right click on the interface. You'll notice right now that there's a yellow side, a green, and a blue. 
and there's also colors on this filter screen. And if we were to add a couple more pipes here just to show how it would work, we can see that there's also a white, a red, and a black. So we've got white, blue, red, green, yellow, and black. White, blue, red, green, yellow, and black. The diamond pipe allows you to determine which direction items go in based on the type of item that it is. So let's give an example here. If we wanted all dirt to go down the blue path, we'd simply take a piece of dirt and put it in the blue side. And if we wanted all cobblestone to go down the green path, we'd put cobblestone in green. If we wanted wood to also go down the blue path, we'd put that there. So let's put a piece of wood, dirt, and cobblestone in our pipe and see what happens. Remember, we told wood to go down the blue path, we told cobblestone to go green, and we told dirt to go blue. So we've got dirt and wood here, and we've got cobblestone here. And that's how diamond pipe works. Finally, we've got the obsidian pipe. Obsidian pipes have a pretty neat property in that they will automatically suck up items that are laying on the ground in front of them and put them into the piping system. So if I were to drop a piece of cobblestone on the ground here, it would get sucked into the pipe system immediately. And because this is cobblestone, it's going to head down the green pipe because the diamond sorter is still there. So obsidian pipes allow you to get items into the piping system that are just laying on the ground in front of it. They don't have a terribly long range by default. However, if you have an engine applied, and like I said, I'll get to engines in a moment, they will definitely be able to pull from a little bit further away. Let's place an engine on the side of this pipe and activate it with a redstone signal. There you go. It pulled the pipe in. You should also note with diamond pipes that if an item doesn't know which direction to go down, it will randomly pick a direction that it does not apply. So in this case, the redstone torch went down the yellow side because it didn't know which direction to go down. It didn't choose blue or green because it knew it wasn't supposed to go that way. However, it went to the yellow side because it was coming in on the red side. So it won't go back out the same direction it came, so the only other alternative was to go yellow. Now when it gets pumped out of the chest, it's going to go and hit this intersection again, and the only option is for it to go down the red side, because it did not come from the red side, and blue and green, like I said, were already filled with other items. So that wraps up the section on item transport pipes. However, let's now talk about transporting liquids through pipes you're going to need a different type of pipe entirely. And in order to get that pipe, first you're going to need to get some cactus, which I got some right here. And you're going to need to cook it in a furnace. When you cook cactus in a furnace, as you should know, you get green dye. Cactus green. If you place the cactus green in a crafting table all by itself, you'll get pipe waterproofing. This will allow you to create waterproof pipes. Simply create your pipe as usual. So here we have a wooden transport pipe. Place that in the crafting table with a piece of pipe waterproofing above it and you'll get a wooden waterproof pipe, which is different from the wooden transport pipe because wooden waterproof pipes transport liquids. So let's get a couple more of these guys. You should note that not all of the pipes can be made with waterproofing. You can make cobblestone waterproof pipes, smooth stone waterproof pipes, iron, and finally gold. There are no diamond or obsidian waterproof pipes.
There are many ways to get liquids in BuildCraft, and I'm going to show you most of them in another video. However, today I'm going to show you how to store liquids, because I'll need to store liquids in order to show how to transport them. Take eight pieces of glass in a cycle like this, and you'll get a tank. Tanks store liquid in BuildCraft. You can store all types of liquid, be it fuel, lava, oil, water, etc. If you place a tank on the ground, you can place water in it, either by pumping it in through pipes, or simply taking a bucket and right-clicking. The yellow liquid is fuel. You cannot store the same liquid, two different liquids, in the same tank. Right-clicking on the tank fills it up. You can also place a tank directly on top of another tank, and they'll automatically join each other. So now this tank could be filled up all the way, and they act as one. And your transport pipes work pretty much the same exact way that you would expect them to with liquid as they do with items. Wooden transport pipes, wooden waterproof pipes that is, is used to transmit liquids from one system to another. And again, you'll need a redstone engine, which I promise we'll go into in another episode. As you can see, it's now getting pumped out, but it has nowhere to go because we haven't laid down our stone waterproof or cobblestone. Again, they both act the same way. Now the liquid is being transferred from this tank to this tank. Iron waterproof pipes work pretty much the same way you'd expect them to. They allow a junction of the pipes to determine which direction items go in. And using a wrench, you can help point the right way. Note that this side is not activating because it's connected to a wooden pipe. This works the same way with item transport pipes, as you cannot have the output pipe of an iron pipe head out to a wooden pipe. So that's why we can only alternate between these two sides. Finally, we have golden pipes, which do act a bit differently on waterproofing pipes. Uh, instead of making liquids travel faster through them, they simply have more capacity. So you can store more liquid in the waterproof pipes than you can with cobblestone. I personally recommend that you use golden waterproof pipes wherever possible. Uh, there's really almost no reason to use cobblestone and stone as opposed to them instead of the fact that they're obviously cheaper to use. So definitely use golden if you have enough gold laying around. Finally, there are power transport pipes. I'm not going to go totally into power right now, suffice to show you how they work. Wooden transport pipes with a piece of redstone above it give a wooden conductive pipe cobblestone, I'm sorry, smooth stone, not cobblestone pipes, give a stone conductive pipe, and golden transport pipes give golden conductive pipes. These are the only three types of pipes that can transmit power. There are no iron, cobblestone obviously, or diamond, or obsidian. Only these three. Wooden pipes can connect to an engine to transmit energy. Conductive pipes send that energy to another destination and golden conductive pipes have less energy loss. Stone conductive pipes lose energy over a set distance. Golden conductive pipes also lose energy, but significantly less. You should almost always use golden conductive pipes where possible, except, of course, unless you don't have the resources to make golden conductive pipes. I definitely recommend always using golden pipes to transmit energy. So that wraps up the piping tutorial for Buildcraft. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching and learned something new, and if not, at least, hope you enjoyed watching it. This is Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.